Spare Rations, once upon a time the king of legendary hand cannons. Between its unique look, sound, and incredible performance, this weapon cemented itself as easily the most iconic hand cannon in the franchise's history. The weapon that had PvP mains queuing up for the Reckoning, a PvE activity that PvE mains barely cared about, the weapon that defined the PvP meta for a long time that was sunset after Beyond Light, returned in Season of the Deep. And it kind of sucks. Guardians, I'd wanted to do a couple more reviews before touching Spare, but it's pissing me off so we're just gonna get it over with. You know, the weapons this season have been pretty disappointing for the most part. Minus the reprised Last Wish weapons, the only weapons from this season I've been impressed with have been Different Times, Outlast, and Combined Action. And given the overall negative reaction to the majority of the seasonal weapons, if there was one that Bungie absolutely could not afford to get wrong, it was Spare Rations. Like honestly, if literally every other weapon released this season had sucked, it probably wouldn't have mattered if Spare had made a comeback as the monster it used to be. Review spoiler alert, it didn't. Now, newer players have to understand, Spare Rations was the definition of an iconic Destiny weapon, so bringing it back in its current form is a real slap in the face to longtime players. Spare was a 150 RPM lightweight frame hand cannon back in the day, it was sunset with Beyond Light, and it lost its 150 RPM fire rate and lightweight frame archetype as well when that archetype was merged with 140s. Again, for newer players, we used to have lightweight 150 hand cannons outside of Sunshot, some real iconic ones too, obviously Spare, but also other weapons that saw time in the spotlight like Waking Vigil, Dire Promise, and Thorn among others. Now, all of these weapons currently are obtainable. Dire Promise from Dares, or if Zer brings one, Waking Vigil from Dreaming City Activities, and Thorn from the Exotic Kiosk. But all of these weapons have been in a really bad place. When our legendary 150s were converted to 140s, they lost the higher rate of fire and the lightweight frame, but did not have their base stats changed to match their other 140 peers. Meaning, these went from being incredible hand cannons to weapons that are either just average or barely managed to clear the above average mark, something that I've started referring to as 150 syndrome. Now, this is where I want to briefly bring up Rose. Rose was also a 150 hand cannon back in the day, and it was sunset and change just like every other legendary 150. But it was reintroduced back in Season of the Seraph as the reward for comp, and Bungie did that right. In fact, Bungie nailed that shit. Not only did Rose in its 140 form have its base stats adjusted to where they needed to be, but Rose got its lightweight frame back, meaning Rose will still give you that wonderful movement and mobility bonus when it's equipped due to its lightweight frame. On top of that, Bungie gave Rose a truly monstrous perk pool. So the hope was that Spare Rations would get similar treatment. Spare and Rose were both iconic PvP weapons, with Spare of course being the far more famous weapon than Rose. So it would make sense to bring it back the same way, with adjusted base stats, a lightweight frame, and a stacked perk pool, right? Well, apparently Bungie didn't think so. Let's take a look at Spare in its current form. So, Spare is a kinetic 140 RPM hand cannon. Let's start by taking a look at its base stats. I'm sure the first thing you notice was the base range, one of the worst in its class. Compare this to the base range on Ostringer with 46, Rose with 43, or Ayas Luna with 51. Even Dire Promise and the still sunset Jack Queen King have better base range than Spare with both at 42. Now, Spare does have decent enough stability, fantastic handling, and an incredible aim assist stat at 83. This does mean that this weapon feels very good, it feels very snappy, and it loves to snag crits. The problem is that range hurts it, and it hurts it bad. Which leads me into the perk pool, which I'll put on the screen now. Let me very quickly get PvE out of the way, because I don't want to talk about PvE on this weapon. Spare was a PvP weapon, and for it to clear, it needed to come back as a strong PvP weapon. You want the PvE roll, put everything into range, barrel, mag, masterwork, and then go subsistence and kinetic tremors or swash. There, done. That's your PvE review. Moving on to PvP. For barrel and magazine perks and masterwork, once again, you need to put everything into range for it to be viable, and I do mean everything. 
full bore for your barrel, ricochet rounds for your mag, and a range masterwork. That takes spares range up to 66, which will at least put it in the good enough category. Next up in the third column, slide shot, rapid hit, or moving target. Slide shot reloads your magazine partially and boosts your range by 20 and stability by 30 when you slide for 3 seconds or until your first shot. Rapid hit will increase your stability and reload speed every time you land a crit, stacking up to 5 times and it will last for 3 seconds. Moving target increases your strafe speed and aim assist when aiming down sights. The benefits here of course are self-explanatory. Next up in the fourth column, Opening Shot, Kill Clip, and Swashbuckler. Opening Shot increases your range and aim assist for the first shot of an engagement. Kill Clip will give you a 25% damage buff if you reload shortly after a kill. Swashbuckler will give a stacking damage buff, stacking up to 5 times, with a 6.7% buff at base and a 33% buff at max. Weapon kills grant one stack of swash, melee kills will grant all five stacks immediately. Now, let's talk about rolls real quick. The main role I see everyone going for is slide shot and opening shot. This does make sense at first glance, since slide shot and opening shot help your range. The problem is it only helps your range on the first shot. So let's say you have the role mentioned above. Full bore, ricochet rounds, range masterwork, slide shot, and opening shot. Assuming you're taking advantage of slide shot, then combined with opening shot, your range will go up to 35 meters for your first shot. After that first shot, you immediately lose the range bonus from slide shot and opening shot, which means that while your first shot has that 35 meter range, your two follow-up shots will have damage drop off at 31 meters. This means that Spare cannot 3-tap at ranges that most other 140s can, and this will throw you off. You'll get that full damage on your first shot at normal 140 ranges, and then your follow-up shots will feel like Spare decided it was done shooting bullets and switched to marshmallows. So keep that in mind if you're going for this roll. The range benefits are only partially helping you. If you're using slide shot and opening shot, then you need to be using slide shot for the partial reload and the first shot stability, and opening shot for the first shot aim assist. The range bonus on slide shot opening shot is too inconsistent for it to really benefit the weapon here. This takes me to what has become my preferred roll, which would be the exact same except with moving target instead of slide shot. Like I said, slide shot is only there for the first shot, and spare already has a mag size of 13 and good enough stability, with a perfect recoil direction of 100 right out the gate. So, I didn't really feel like I was gaining enough from slide shot to really make it the play here. Instead, I found I preferred moving target. The bonus to aim assist from it takes the aim assist stat from 83 up to 93, which is huge, and it means you could either throw on a targeting adjuster on the weapon and one on your helmet and max out the aim assist, or just keep the 93 aim assist and free up those slots for other mods, such as maybe an Icarus grip on the weapon and a targeting mod for your special weapon on your helmet instead, you get the idea. Plus, moving target also buffs your strafe speed, which is very helpful in duels. Opening shot is still my first choice in the fourth column. Kill clip and swash are fine, and the damage boost can help with range a little bit, but on 140s I'm typically not a huge fan of damage perks because they don't actually reduce your time to kill. But coming back to moving target and opening shot, I found it was just better to constantly make sure my enemies are within that 31 meter range instead of trying to use slide shot to extend my range. Spare was just more consistent if I was just continuously closing distance. And that is one thing I do like about Spare. The aim assist and handling makes this weapon feel very snappy and very consistent at the right ranges. This is a weapon that feels like it was meant to be used aggressively. Spare is a brawler. The problem is that using a hand cannon in an aggressive manner with range limited to 31 meters is difficult. That's a low enough range that if you're not extremely careful, it's easy to stray into submachine gun ranges. Right now, submachine guns have way more reach than they should, so you have to be very, very careful with your engagement distances. The other problem is that Rose feels the same way. Rose wants to be used aggressively too. Rose is also a brawler, and Rose is better than Spare. Rose still has great stability and handling, high aim assist, and the advantage of having much better base range and the lightweight frame archetype. 
The only advantage that Spare has is that, unlike Rose, Spare is still in the loot pool and it doesn't require you to play comp. The problem there is that the price of focusing this weapon at the sonar station is absolutely insane at four deep engrams, and for some godforsaken reason, Spare is not craftable. This absolutely infuriates me. Ostringer came back as craftable, so did Beloved, Imperial Decree, the Ikelos weapons, so on and so forth. So why in God's name did they not do this with the Reckoning weapons? It makes no sense. Now, spare isn't all bad, there are some positives here, the high aim assist and high handling do make this weapon just feel incredible. Spare rations has pretty much always been the best feeling 140 in the game, and that hasn't changed. It feels fast, snappy, and accurate, and it does love to snag those headshots, but that really isn't enough. What's even more frustrating is that Spare really only needs a couple of things to make it really good. One, buff its base range up and into the 40s to around the same place as Rose, and two, make it a lightweight frame 140 also like Rose. For that matter, I would also say replace high caliber rounds or ricochet rounds with accurized rounds. If Bungie did that, then Spare would become a fantastic hand cannon. It could hang with the other top tier legendary options in the game. But as it stands right now, unless you want one for the sake of nostalgia, there's really no point in trying to get a good spare rations. I had really hoped that Bungie had learned something from the negative reception Mindbenders received, and the positive reception that other reprised iconic weapons, such as Imperial Decree, Beloved, or Ostringer received. So again, Bungie, you cannot and should not bring back iconic weapons unless you plan to make them stronger than ever. Anything short of that, and there's no point in having them back at all. I don't know what Bungie was thinking, I would love to know how on earth Spare shipped this way because my god talk about a fumble. So that Spare rations a truly sad end to a once iconic hand cannon, Spare is at best a B tier weapon and that's with an absolutely perfect roll, anything short of that and it's C tier or lower. I really hope Bungie gives this weapon some love because man does Spare need it. That's all for me today, Guardians. If you enjoyed this video or found it helpful, do me a favor and leave me a like and a comment. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button with the bell icon, it really helps me out. We're only 60 subs away from 500, and when I can hit 500, I can start the process to become a partner at YouTube. So it would really mean a lot to me if you subscribed. Plus, this review was depressing as hell to make, so show the video some love, I would really appreciate it. For now, I will see you all in the next video. Peace, Guardians.